the Angel Flight organization, of which Angel Flight West is just a part of, covers the entire United States. Um, Angel Flight West covers 13 western states from about Colorado westward, including Alaska and Hawaii. And I am in charge of the Northern California wing, or the Northern California portion of Angel Flight West. And in that position, I have 335 pilots in Northern California that are willing to help out. And we have what we call Earth Angels. We have 50 of those which help with the ground transportation. So once we get somebody to the destination city when they're go where they're going, an Earth Angel will come up and transport them to UCSF or Stanford or wherever there to get their, their treatment. I'm happy to say I, I saw one person in here that we provided service to their organization. We serve uh, UCSF quite a bit. We serve Stanford Children's Hospital and Stanford Medical Center. They are very big uh, centers of excellence for us in Northern California. Our hub airports, if you want to call them hubs, where we have the most traffic coming in and out is Oakland and Palo Alto. A lot in Palo Alto. And we come from all over uh, Northern California, from Crescent City uh, in the north from, and Visalia in the south. And if we have pilots or missions that require somebody to come from like San Diego up to Northern California, we can do that too. We break that up into two flights uh, to help out our passengers and to make it easier to get pilots to volunteer for that. <clears throat> Angel Flight West has been in, uh, in operation since 1983 been in business for 33 years. Our pilots have donated $40 million in costs in transporting patients to and from wherever they need to be since 1983. We have about 1,900 volunteers, of which about 1,000 of those are volunteer pilots. And as the film said, it costs our, our patients uh, nothing. The pilots volunteer and pay for everything. They pay for the ground transportation, they pay for the fuel and the use of the aircraft, whether they have to rent it or they own it, and uh, we do it with a lot of joy. We love to fly, we love to help people, and we get to do both of them at the same time through Angel Flight West. <clears throat> we have a target audience of about 3.6 million Americans per year. Those that are transportation disadvantaged persons who have a, some disease management or preventive care issues, and those that uh, have non-emergency medical care uh, requirements. So we have a lot of uh, uh, passengers that come up from like Crescent City and Arcata, where there seems to be a lot of cancer going, uh, problems up there, and there's no specialty centers. And so we fly down quite regularly. I myself have flown one family from Oregon to Palo Alto several times. They have five children. Two of them have had heart transplants, and a third one is awaiting a heart. And I tell you, it's very rewarding to, to help patients like that. So we want to reach out to everybody that could use our service and have them call us and see what we can do for you. If it means bringing in a relative to come and take care of you while you're recuperating, we can do that. If, if you know somebody that needs this kind of service, have them call us. We can help them out. I, I'm not sure if you're the exact tar target audience because I think you're all pretty local. But if you know or if any of you need to go down to Los Angeles for a specialty treatment, we can provide that. You saw Roberta in the video, Roberta Ventura. I actually met her last week. For nine and a half years, she was on experimental treatment, and she flew down to Santa Monica once a week for nine and a half years with Angel Flight. And now that, that uh, experimental drug is now on the market, now she doesn't need to avail herself of our services, but she now goes out and speaks on our behalf. And what a, what a sweet woman. So. We just love to do what we do, and we want to do it as much as we can. The people we serve are patients traveling for non-emergency reasons. In other words, if you have a routine appointment where you need to go up, or 
go somewhere and visit a doctor or go to visit somebody in the hospital, we can do that and we'll take you back home. We also do burn camps and uh, deaf camps and other kind of camps like that where children that are victims of burn uh, injuries and deaf children, they get to go to Yosemite for a week or so and we fly all those kids up to Yosemite uh, for a week every year. And we, we do a lot of that, quite a bit of that. And they're, it's really heartbreaking to see some of these kids, but boy, they sure like to fly and they sure like to go to camp. So it's very worthwhile. We also do some domestic violence relocation services. I personally haven't done that, but I, I have signed up domestic violence centers to use our services when they, do, when they need that. And we do, uh, as you saw in the film, we do uh, transport veterans uh, and active military uh, personnel. As Veterans Airlift Command, another organization I belong to, uh, we do that quite regularly. We, they'll get weekend uh, pass or something to go visit their family when they're in the hospital. We'll go pick them up and take them up to where they're from, let them visit their family, and then we'll fly them back. And people with other compelling needs, such as relatives, people needing a relative to come up and take care of them, we'll fly for that too, okay? And these are a few passenger stories. I won't go over those. I think you all have the, the slide presentation. And this is a map of where we fly. All the pink ones on the right, well, your left, that's, that's Angel Flight West states of responsibility. As you can see, we have Angel Flight all over the country, but Angel Flight West is who I represent, and we are by, by far the most active. Probably geography, but also because we live in the great state of California and have a lot of needs. Our volunteer pilots fly small, usually small single engine <coughs> aircraft. You saw some jets there. You'll get to fly in one every once in a while, but don't count on that. <laughs> They're typically four to six seats, and the pilots are all Angel Flight West volunteers. And our missions are usually limited to 300 miles. If they're longer than 300 miles, then we'll break it out into two missions. For example, if somebody's coming from Santa Monica up to here, we'll probably do a mission from Santa Monica to Bakersfield, then another pilot will pick them up in Bakersfield and bring them up to here and then do the reverse when they're ready to go home. Our biggest commercial uh, partner is Alaska Airlines. If we can't uh, do some of, their, some of their flights on a volunteer basis, quite often we can get them booked on an Alaska Airlines flight. And Alaska has donated millions of dollars to this cause. Also, if you fly them at Alaska Airlines, you ever want to donate your miles to Angel Flight West, you can do that through Alaska. This is how we can help for transplant flights. It's a great resource for transportation pre and post transplant uh, scheduled appointments. So we aren't an emergency service, so anybody that gets in our aircraft, they have to be ambulatory or only need a reasonable amount of assistance to get into the aircraft. Uh, if, they're, if it's emergency, it would have to be, if they need air transportation, it has to be an air ambulance, which we are not, okay? We're clearly for pre and post transplant scheduled uh, appointments. If you were to, I guess if someone were to have a kidney ready for them and they were reasonably able to get into an airplane, we could probably do it on a day's notice and transport them. But if it's an emergency situation, then it would have to be an air ambulance. Who qualifies for our help? The passengers must be medically and sta uh, stable and ambulatory. Must have a scheduled appointment or a pending appointment. Uh, have a financial need or another compelling consideration. I consider anybody that has to fly more than once a week, that's a financial need because that'll break you. So we will general fly anybody that has a regular appointment that they need to go to. Okay. 
have to be capable of sitting upright only because our aircraft are not very accommodating to lying down. I don't know how many, are there any pilots in the room? No? Has anybody ever flown an angel flight mission? No, has anybody ever heard of angel flight? <laughs> okay. Yes? Good. Yeah, uh, they're small planes. I mean, it's like uh, my plane is a four seat Cessna uh, 172. So the cabin of that is kind of like flying a Volkswagen Deedle. So there's not much ability to lie down. Okay. Uh, and you must be able to fly in an air, unpressurized aircraft. Some of our aircraft are pressurized, but most are not. And uh, you could probably request one, but the chances of getting flight, uh, flights or volunteer pilots would be lessened by that. And if you're a pilot, which there aren't any, uh, and would like to fly for angel flight, we're always looking for new volunteers. We're also looking for earth angels, people that can provide transportation, like to and from Oakland Airport, or Oakland Airport to UCSF, or San Carlos Airport to UCSF, or Palo Alto <coughs> Airport to the Children's Hospital or Stanford Medical Center. And of course, we can always take donations. We appreciate that. Like I said, all the missions are paid for by the pilots with their own with their own funds. They provide all the operating costs of flying the airplanes. But we do uh, get get funding to operate our office in Santa Monica, so we can run the dispatch center and the mission coordination uh, routines that we have to go through. And these are the contacts for, there are some brochures back here. And I also have some <coughs> pens back there if you'd like some. And uh, hopefully, uh, if, we, if you see a need for us, we can help you with that. Okay. At this time, I take some questions. Yes. I would, probably not the day of surgery, probably like the day before, yeah. yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> or the testing. Or for the testing. Yeah, or for the testing. Yes. You would just contact Angel Flight, go through that process. Uh, they do a lot of it online now, do everything online anymore, but you can go on there and start that process, and then the staff in the office will contact you uh, usually the same day and start working with you. Yes? How far in advance does one need to go to contact Angel Flight to uh, uh, schedule, a, uh, or schedule a flight? Or how long does the process take to go ahead and make that you can actually fly with Angel Flight? Well, obviously, as with anything, we'd like you to notify us as soon as you know of your appointment, and then we can set that up. Generally, uh, we'd like a couple days minimum but, you know, because pilots have to sometimes rearrange their schedule and see what they can do or see what the weather is going to be like and things like that. Some pilots, you know, they don't pick up missions until the last minute once they know what the weather's like, you know. And so the earlier you tell us, the better it is. But usually on a couple of days' notice, we could probably do it for you. Yes? Is there a financial uh, threshold for necessity? There are, and I don't know exactly what they are, but if you have to do it on a regular basis, you'll qualify, as long as you're not Bill Gates or somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Bill. <laughs> Great. Any other questions? Thank you for your time. I'll be around. <laughs>